in poker, some hands are dangerous not because they're weak, but because they look playable. They look beautiful. They're suited. They're connected. They're full of promise. Jack-10 suited. King-Jack suited. 8-7 suited. But if you're playing these hands from early position, you're not being creative. You're walking into a trap. Before we go further, let's define what early position actually means. At a nine-handed table, early position includes three seats, small blind, acts second to last pre-flop, but first post-flop, very hard to play profitably. Big blind, last to act pre-flop, but out of position the rest of the hand, already invested, still vulnerable. Under the gun, first to act pre-flop, no information, maximum exposure. When you are in early position, you have a lot of potential action behind you, yet to act. This means you are deprived and will remain deprived of information for the balance of the hand, unless everyone to your left folds, leaving only the blinds and yourself, which is rare. Due to your lack of information, when you open a pot from early position, it has to be with enough card strength to overcome your informational weakness. That's the trade-off. You're acting blind, so your hand better not require a read or miracle card to justify a bet. What you need is clarity. Clarity means hands that are likely ahead right now, not hands that need the board to bail you out. Pocket aces, kings, and queens are clear. You're not hoping, you're leading. Other hands that can be played from early position, depending on table dynamics, ace-king and ace-queen, suited or off-suit. Pocket pairs down to eights. These hands carry raw strength or strong potential. But you still have to play them wisely because you're out of position every street. And let's be clear, being suited doesn't mean it's a strong hand. The probability of flopping a flush? About 0.8% or 118 to 1 odds. What are the probability of making a flush pre-flop to river? Just 6.5%. That's 14.4 to 1 odds against you. Let's take another look at that list of early position starting hands that have clarity. Notice what's missing? Jack-10 suited, King-Jack suited, 8-7 suited. That's not a mistake. It's by design. Here's why. Let's take Jack-10 suited. You're under the gun. No information. Players behind you ready to act. The hand looks strong. Broadway potential. Smooth. Suited. But the numbers tell a different story. So how does that Jack-10 play for the flop? The most likely outcome is that you completely whiff the flop. But then there is a 27% or 2.7 to 1 odds that you hit either a jack or a 10 on the flop. How about flopping two pair? That's a 2% probability or 49 to 1 odds. And if by some miracle you do flop two pair, there is also now a potential straight draw on the board. Odds of flopping trips, that's 99 to 1 odds or about 1%. You could flop a flush, that 118 to 1 odds or 0.84%. How about a flush draw? there is a 10% probability or 9 to 1 odds of that happening. And if you do flop a flush draw, you now have about a 35% or 2.86 to 1 odds of completing it by the river, assuming you can get favorable pot odds to see both the turn and river cards. But you also have a straight draw. Odds to make either a straight or a flush by the river is 5.67 to 1 or 15%. Let's say you hit top pair a jack. That's great except you're holding a 10 kicker and you're first to act. Do you bet it? Get called in three places? Do you check? Get bet into? Even when you hit the board, you're left guessing. And if you really get lucky and flop two pair, now you've likely put a straight draw on the board, plus the potential for over pairs and higher two pair combos to beat you. That's not clarity, it's chaos. It's the same story with hands like King Jack suited. Sure, it looks strong, but... You really flop anything better than top pair, and your kicker doesn't dominate much. The hands that call or raise you often have you beat, or are drawing live. When you miss, you're stuck, and when you hit, you're still not sure where you stand. And again, you're either first to act or early to act. Let's go even further, 8-7 suited. It's fun, it's flashy, it's connected, and it's an absolute trap in early position. What are you hoping for? Two pair? That puts a straight draw on the board. Never mind the odds are 49 to 1 of that happening. A straight? You're 10 to 1, 9%, to make it from pre-flop to river. A flush? You're 118 to 1 to flop it. 10% chance to flop a flush draw 35% chance to make that flush by the river. And even if you make a flush, you're holding 8 high. 
The odds that another player also holds two cards of your suit is about 35% in a nine-handed game, and the odds are good that their high card beats your eight. And you're playing it with no information, out of position, into aggressive players? This isn't creativity, it's costly. Now maybe you're thinking, but what if I know two players behind me are likely to fold? Doesn't that make Jack-10 or 8-7 seated safer to play? Well, maybe you're right, or maybe not. And that's the problem. Early position offers no guarantees, no clarity, and no information. That's why you have to rely on something you can control, hand strength. And 8-7 or Jack-10 suited, tempting as it looks, isn't strength. It's trouble. These hands aren't unplayable. But from early position, they're landmines. They might look good on a GTO chart or in a training simulator. But in a live game, out of position, with aggressive players behind you, you're lighting money on fire. In early position, you don't need pretty. You need clarity. No matter your skill level, every player is prone to pre-flop mistakes. Some are subtle, others are glaring, but most stem from one root cause, a failure to think situationally. Let's walk through five of the most common errors players make before the flop and how to avoid them. 1. Playing without a plan. Many players toss chips into the pot without a clear purpose. Are you raising to thin the field? To take the lead? To gather information? Or are you just clicking buttons because you're bored or card dead? Before you make any pre-flop move, ask, what am I trying to accomplish with this action? If you can't answer that question clearly, your decision is probably flawed. Two. Ignoring position. We've said it before, and we'll say it again. Position is power. Too many players treat preflop hands the same regardless of where they sit at the table. But a hand like King-10 suited is a completely different animal from under the gun than it is on the button. Many players believe that late position means you can play anything that any two cards will do on the button. That's dangerous thinking. Being last to act is a powerful advantage, but it doesn't make Jack-4 suited a strong hand. The hand odds don't improve just because you're in position. Don't confuse leverage with license. Use position to maximize edge, not to justify poor decisions. 3. Overvaluing suitedness. Just because two cards are suited doesn't make them strong. Flushes are rare. The odds of flopping a flush with suited cards are 118 to 1. Even adding in flush draws and turn river possibilities, you'll only complete a flush, pre-flop to river about 6.5% of the time. Don't confuse potential with probability. Two suited cards may look prettier than off-suit ones, but if they're weak, disconnected, or out of position, they're still trouble. Four, relying on emotion or gut instinct over logic and data. There's nothing wrong with intuition, but when your gut starts overriding sound math and strategy, you're headed for a leak in your game. That hunch that Jack-10 suited is due? There is no such thing as being due for anything, not a hand, not a player. You can lose 100 consecutive hands. That doesn't mean you are due to win one. The feeling that pocket fives are lucky today, or that nines are hot because they've appeared on the flop three consecutive times. There's no such thing. It's just the math level setting, nothing more. Those aren't strategies. They're impulses. Long-term winning poker comes from repeatable logic, not from mood swings and superstition. Five, defaulting to rule, base thinking. You've probably heard all the classics. Always raise if you're going to enter a pot. Suited connectors are great for multi-way pots. Never limp, ever. But poker is situational. The right move in one game or hand can be the wrong move in another. If you're blindly applying rules without understanding their purpose, you're playing someone else's game, not your own. If there's one takeaway from everything we've covered so far, it's this. Poker isn't about rigid rules. It's about adaptable frameworks. Too many players build their game around absolutes. I always raise with ace-queen. I never limp. I play tight in early position, loose and late. But poker doesn't reward rigidity. It rewards thoughtfulness, observation, and adaptation. That's why you should create a pre-flop framework, a flexible set of guidelines that you understand, own, and can adjust based on the situation. Start by asking yourself simple, structured questions from each position, what hands will I fold, limp, or raise? You don't need a laminated chart. You need a range based on clarity, table dynamics, and your goals for each hand. What will I do if I face a raise? Or a three-back? Will you fold that ace-jack offsuit in early position when you're re-raised? Will you call a loose player's raise on the button with suited connectors? What's your plan? 
If you can answer these before you act, you're playing with purpose. Here's a simple habit that will sharpen your game instantly. Before every pre-flop action, verbalize your intent. Silently in your head is fine. Say things like, I'm raising to thin the field and isolate the limper. I'm calling here because I have position and a drawing hand that plays well multi-way. I'm folding because this hand is too weak to play profitably out of position. If you can't articulate why you're doing something, don't do it. This forces clarity. It builds discipline. And it helps you separate good habits from lazy ones. Your pre-flop plan isn't a chart. It's a philosophy. One based on understanding, not memorization. Adaptation, not automation. Context, not commandments. Know your ranges. Know your reasons. And most importantly, know that every hand is a new situation. A good framework doesn't play the hand for you. It gives you the tools to play it better. Poker isn't about rules. It's about decisions and having the right tools to make the best decisions possible with incomplete information. There is no single chart, no magical pre-flop formula, and no guru-approved strategy that will make the game easy. Because the truth is, poker isn't easy. It's situational. It's dynamic. It's driven by players, tendencies, emotions, and probabilities, not prescriptions. What you need isn't a rulebook. What you need is a framework, a way to think through decisions, a toolkit you can build, refine, and sharpen over time, hand after hand, session after session. That's the philosophy of Poker Railbird. We're not here to tell you what to do. We're here to give you the tools to think it through. So take what we've discussed here regarding position, clarity, hand selection, pre-flop mistakes, and situational awareness, and use it to build your own strategy, one that evolves with your game. One that's rooted in logic, data, and adaptability. Want the full breakdown on preflop play? Check out the complete article at PokerRailbird.com. We've placed the link in the description below. Because it's not just about the cards. It's about the decisions. This is Terry Wood from PokerRailbird.com. Thanks for watching. If you think this video added value to your poker strategy, then like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you at the tables.